Now the focus of this program has been to improve our understanding of soil biology, how to measure it and how to manage it. And we've been doing this at a number of long-term experimental sites set up to explore the key drivers of soil biological functioning. So those drivers are very much the same as what drives our own health, so what we eat, our air supply, our water supply, and also our environment, so are there any harmful toxins around. So when it comes to what organisms eat, they obviously need energy in the form of carbon and nutrients, and those ultimately come from organic matter inputs into the soil whether that be external inputs such as livestock manures or whether that's through whatever's growing on that soil through the root and the residue return. So we've got three sites looking at different organic material inputs to the soil uh, that have been repeated for a number of years and then we've got another site looking at crop rotation so various different crops grown on the same field at the same time. And then it's also the physical environment that's important, so how much air, how much water is available. So we've got a site uh, looking at tillage and another site looking at drainage. And then finally, when it comes to the chemical environment, we've got a site up in Scotland looking at pH levels and how that affects soil biological functioning. So these sites have been a really good test bed for the scorecard approach but they've also provided a really good resource of soil that we've been able to use to explore more innovative cutting edge science approaches to understanding soil biology. So we're now going to look at three examples where we've used the scorecard to explore those key drivers of biological functioning. So the first one is at GWCT Loddington where we've looked at the physical environment, so specifically tillage and we've used a long-term direct drill field and we've uh, ploughed up three strips of those, that field. And we've looked at the effect of what happens if I plough up a field that's been no-till for a number of years. Um, is it important? Does it have an impact on the soil biology and soil health? So here's the scorecard for that field. You can actually see that it's pretty much a lot of green. So that actually saying that the field is pretty good in terms of the physical, biological and the chemical health. But we've got here, we've got the plough and here we've got the direct drill. And we measured in 2018, one year after ploughing, and then three years later in 2020, three years after ploughing. And you can see that actually immediately, one year after ploughing, our earthworm numbers are depleted compared to the direct drill, 10 versus 6. So actually ploughing does have the expected effect on earthworms and our scorecard has picked that up. In 2020, we didn't quite see the same thing in the earthworm populations and that's actually because we think we went when the soil was too dry, those earthworms are hiding deep down in the soil, we didn't pick it up. Also in 2020, we do see a bit of um, soil structural degradation in terms of the limiting layer BES score on the plough plots. That was around about 15 centimetres depth. But overall, actually, the, the soil health scorecard for this field is, is pretty good. And it actually says that one year of ploughing may not be uh, as detrimental as, as we might think. So now we move up to Scotland at SRUC, where we've got a really long term site looking at crop rotation and pH. So at this site, we've got an eight course rotation with all uh, stages of that rotation in place at the same time in the field. Superimposed on that, we've got different pH levels ranging from four and a half to seven and a half. And so we're looking here at the chemical environment for the soil biology and its food source. So what's growing on the soil. So we've got two scorecards here. We just dipped into a number of the treatments. So at the top here, we've got the pH scorecard, looking at four and a half up to seven and a half, and the key scorecard indicators. And you can see automatically your eyes drawn to that pH four and a half, where we've got reds and ambers. So soil bi biology doesn't like um, acid soils, basically. And actually, it supports our lining policy that says, actually, pH six and a half, we've got the majority of greens. So actually, liming to six and a half is a good thing to do. When you 
go up to seven and a half, things start to tail off again. If we then look at the crop type, so the rotational, we then dipped into, again, four different crop types. And we've got oats, grass, wheat and potatoes. You can see, again, your eyes drawn immediately to the grass, which has the majority of green. So having grass in your rotation is a good thing for soil health. Then you can see also a few reds and ambers on the potatoes and the oats. Uh, cultivations associated with potatoes, probably not being too helpful for an earthworm population. And the oats, the oats is coming right at the end of the rotation. So after several years of arable cropping, it's just to go, about to go back into grass. And you can see actually the organic matter has dropped down and it's ready for that grass to crop to come back in again. So now we're going to our final site. And at this site, this is Harper Adams University. We're looking at food source and in particular, organic material additions. So at this site, we've got a number of different organic materials, farmyard manure, green compost that have been applied for a number of repeated years. So we sampled twice, once in 2017 in a grass lay, and then again in 2020 in cereal stubble. That 2020 sampling followed three years of arable cultivation, including potatoes. So here we have the scorecard, the 2017 and the 2020. So immediately you can see straight away that in the cereal stubble, we've got more um, reds and ambers compared to in the grass, showing that actually our health, the soil health there is poorer after those three years of arable cultivation compared to after two years of grass lay. Superimposed on that, we've got those different organic material additions. So we've got 23 years of farmyard manure, 13 years of green compost, compared to a control which received no organic material, but did receive manufactured fertilizer. So the nutrition was the same across all, the, all three treatments. And so again, your eyes are drawn to that control treatment in both years. So whether it's in the grass lay or in the cereal stubble, we've got more yellows and reds uh, on that control treatment, which did not receive any organic material compared to where we've got farmyard manure and green compost, providing those nutrients, providing the energy, which has boosted organic matter content and supported greater biological functioning.